Now that we have created a new project and migrated the ArchViz user interface UI3 into it, we can create a new level to start the scene. We can do so in the content browser. First, we have to add a content browser window. Somehow it got closed. Open the window menu on the very top of the editor and add a content browser. Other windows, like the level browser are there too, in case you miss one of them. You can add up to four separate content browser windows. I'll dock it next to the levels window where it was before. Let's create a new folder for our project and call it Arch Viz Project 01. Then create a levels folder for all project specific levels. In that folder, add a new level and call it AVP01 Persistent Keyboard. Save the new level. Double clicking the new level will open it. The editor may prompt you to save changes to a few levels from the demo project. Don't save them this time. You want to keep the demo project files unchanged. The viewport is black. The level has no lights or other assets. Now you would start adding content to your scene. Let's add a couple of sublevels from the existing demo scene instead to speed things up. I'll add the UI3 dynamic lighting and the UI3 loft building level to the scene. You can do that in the level browser. Sublevels are like any other level. They become a sub-level by getting attached to the main level. It's similar to having an XREF file in 3ds Max. It's best to organize the content of the scene into a few levels. This allows work to be shared with other developers. One person works on lighting, and another one on the building meshes, or the terrain. And it's easier to debug crashes and performance issues. You can share assets over multiple scenes as well. Here we use the loft assets and lighting for the new scene. Now it's time to place the info map. Make sure that the persistent level is the current level. The info map needs to be in this level for the interface to work. Browse to the blueprint folder in the ArchViz UI3 project and drag the blueprint called s.ui3 info map into the scene. Let's add the floor drawings first. Make sure the info map is selected. Then browse down to the floor plan section in the details panel. Add an element to the array called floors or levels. The drawings are in the texture folder. Drag the one for the ground floor onto the floor plan variable. Then name it ground floor. Always start with the lowest floor if the building has multiple floors. Move the info map actor so the floor plan is just a couple of units above the building floor. You can rotate the info map actor if necessary but do not scale it. Use the floor plan scale variable in the settings instead and continue moving the info map until the drawing matches the level geometry. I find it best to type the scale values manually. The drawing can guide you placing the furniture and help making sure that the building is modeled correctly. The texture needs to be a black and white drawing to be displayed correctly. The size doesn't really matter but it should at least be the size of the screen resolution. Then add the loft floor by adding another array element to the floors and levels.
Add the height difference between the two floors. It's usually around 275 centimeters or editor units. The drawings need to have the same size and the position of the floors needs to match exactly. You cannot align the upper floor's textures. You will need to select the info map every time you make a change to the user interface or its settings. Select the actor billboard or the white areas of the floor plan drawing to select the info map blueprint. You may have to enable translucent selection in the editor settings if your floor drawings aren't 100% black and white and you cannot select the drawing. Let's test the interface. Hit the play button. The screen will stay black. Levels added as sublevels are set to stream from a blueprint. They have a blue dot next to the level name. But there is nothing set to stream them yet. You could right-click the level name and set the streaming method to always loaded. But let's add the names of the levels to the UI instead. In the info map scroll back up to the project settings. Then add two elements to the array called stream levels. Enter the exact names of the levels as they are seen in the level browser. The screen still stays black when hitting the play button. We haven't set the game mode yet. The game mode is necessary to load the UI. Without the UI loaded the levels won't stream. Open the world settings window and set the game mode to S.UI3 game mode keyboard. Let's also add a player start to the main level. Put a blocking volume underneath it flush with the floor. The player will spawn before the building level is streamed in. He would most likely fall through the not existing floor without the blocking volume. Save and hit play now and the scene will load correctly. The main menu layout array holds the menu items of the interface. It's in the UI panel design section of the info map. It might already have some elements in it or it might be empty. You may prefer to leave the layout as a starting point for your project's interface and modify it from there. I'll delete the array to have a fresh start. No interface will show up if the main menu layout array is empty. Press the plus icon to add an array element. Use the exit icon texture from the UI text folder as the menu icon. Enter, exit, as the menu name. Then add an element to the feature panel array. Choose exit menu as the feature type. It's at the bottom of the list. There will be a separate video tutorial about the user interface design. The interface will now have one button called exit. A feature panel will open from it which allows the user to quit the game. This concludes this tutorial. But let's set the new level as the default editor and game level in the project settings. Now the level will be loaded each time you open the project.